To start things, we've gotten confirmation thanks to the character roll call that every student from each house is making it into Three Hopes. There were doubts of this at first due to the fact that trailers only focused on specific students besides each house leader like Hubert and Monica for Black Eagles, Mercy and Dudu for Blue Lions, and Hilda and Lawrence for Golden Deer, but it's nice to see this will be the case. Still, it's up in the air if the church characters will get the same treatment, or even if the Ashen Wolves are gonna make it in. But yeah, there isn't a Silver Snow equivalent path seen right now, so I hope they end up being playable in some capacity. This breakdown will go through each character's call and try to point out certain details that the casual viewer may have missed. Because we have no lives and talk about this game way too much. The first character is, of course, Dimitri. We know plenty about him in this game relative to his cohort, so there's not much to peer into. Dimitri has a thunder affinity with his attacks, and we now know what that effect does on enemies. Shocked enemies can be knocked back, and thunder can spread towards nearby enemies, allowing the shocked status to spread. Dudu is up next, and similar to His Highness, not much else to observe besides his new attack combinations, although I did notice the blue pot on the top left. Pots contain bar rejuvenating items for special gauges, so that's a thing. The Mercedes scene has brown pots for what it's worth, and that's probably going to contain money or HP. I can tell where your strength comes from for the people you care about. Mercedes is up next, and we get a preview of her magic in action. As mentioned before, faith and reason as magic types don't seem to have a distinction this time around, and I'm guessing if there is a light element, she's going to have it. Her light magic has massive AoE range, and funny enough, in three houses, all she has is Nosferatu for offensive magic, so I guess she had to pick up some new tricks for this one. Ash is up next, wielding a trusty iron bow to start things off, and he's the first character known so far that is newly confirmed, and we get to see his and the other other Blue Lion students' portrait. There's no point regretting what I've done. I chose to join this fight. He mentions there's no point in him regretting to join the fight, so I wonder if this has something to do with how he usually defects to the Fargus Dukedom outside of Azure Moon slash Crimson Flower, and how the situation could return in some way in Azure Gleam. Or at the very least, sentiments of having quote unquote no regrets from Three Houses comes from Lanato related stuff. Something that struck my curiosity was the reticle type of attack here. In Warriors 1, no such attack really existed, instead the aim and shoot type of attack was like a turret type thing. Here, Ash aims somewhere on the ground and arrows rain down, and I'm not sure if the green aura around this attack means that his attacks are wind-based, but we'll see. I'll cut down anyone who dares stand against us. <laughs> Listen to me, I'm just as bad as the boar. Felix is next, and there is a tonal shift in the trailer. His part starts with a cutscene to complement a music change. In that cutscene with Shez, he's running off screen and is actually wielding the Sword of Moralta. This sword is the sacred weapon of Fraldarius and is earned only in Azur Moon in Chapter 15 by having Byleth talk to Rodrigue after he appears there. Not to stretch the imagination too far, but now I'm curious if Three Hopes will have Rodrigue give this sword to his son, or if Felix will outright start with it. Something tells me it's the form as the gameplay following is just him with the normal sword. I'm unclear if he has an elemental effect. At 41 seconds, there's a brief light blue effect after his attacks, but honestly, that might just be the attacks after effect and nothing more. Still, it's an extremely cool showcase of the Swordmaster, and the inclusion of more characters in actual cutscenes is really, really exciting. You're the coolest, Felix! Huh? I'm a knight's daughter, you know. I won't go down easy! Annette opens her section with some attack combinations, and adorably any time she attacks, music notes emit from her. She really likes singing, what can I say? She is showcasing fire, wind, and even more wind. As a bonus, she shows off her axe skills with the bolt axe. Neither Felix or Annette have the hero's relics present yet. Doubtless, they will appear in some capacity, though. Oops, sorry. I just gonna peel my eyes off you for a minute there. Next, Sylvain is up, as he wields the Lance of Ruin and demolishes the enemies around him. As expected from him, the line he says in the trailer suggests he's flirting with some woman before going into serious mode. Maybe it's female Shez. I also like how he casually tells the enemy that he'll see them in hell, he guesses. I'll see you in hell, I guess. Maybe it's a callback to the famous quote, burn until we meet again. You were slacking off, Sylvain. Glory to the banner of the night. 
Finally, Ingrid takes the stage fighting on her Pegasus with the hero relic Lewin. And if you look carefully at one point, one of her attacks used appears to be an ice elemental. So if I had to guess, she's using the combat art Frozen Lance, which fittingly she has access to in Three Houses already, ending in her showcase with what appears to be Burning Quake or hopefully it's Burning Quake, which was Lewin's combat art. And I didn't really realize it, but yeah, Heroes Relic's combat arts actually having unique animations is exciting. That was a very disappointing part of Three Houses' graphics for me personally, so hopefully that's gotten addressed here. And we really shouldn't be surprised that these Pegasus Knight animations are pretty recycled, but why not reuse them if you have them, right? Lastly, the website about the special release of Fire Emblem Three Hopes, Game City, has updated its world section, and in it you can now view three different facial expressions for male and female Shez, Arvel, interestingly, and the Blue Lions members. I personally think Arvel's is the coolest because it's brand new, but it's a fun, neat little thing to explore, which will clearly be updated when it's time for the Black Eagles and the Golden Deer to have their time in the spotlight. This trailer genuinely sent chills down my spine. I really enjoy all all of the new designs, they're all great and I think they fit very well with who these characters are. I kept re-watching this trailer over and over again just to see these characters back in and seemingly having a more action-oriented like role in the story, even if it's just random cutscenes and stuff, is really really exciting and we're only on one of three trailers so I can't even fathom what the next two are going to be. I'm so, so, so excited. I don't know when they would come out. I don't think they would push them out like one after the other. I think they'll probably pad out for time because the game is coming out in like six weeks at this point. So yeah. Anyways, my question to you guys is which one of these costumes are your favorites? And between the Golden Deer and Black Eagles, which video are you excited to see more? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my Three Hopes coverage, please subscribe and, you know, please support the channel that way. The channel is so close to 90 4,000 subscribers and your support would greatly help the channel get there. Once again, thank you so much for tuning in and hopefully we'll get some new news not too far from now. With that all being said, have a good rest of your week. What day is it even? Have a good rest of your week. It's, oh, have a good weekend. In fact, it's Friday and I'll see you in the next one. Deuces.